Gore says the Arctic has been warming faster than the rest of the planet. It is not. While it is in general true that during periods of warming the Arctic will warm faster than other regions, Gore does not mention that the Arctic has been cooling over the past 60 years and is now one degree Celsius cooler than it was in the 1940s. Gore says global warming is making the Greenland ice sheet unstable. It is not. Greenland ice grows two inches a year. The Greenland ice sheet survived each of the previous three interglacial periods, each of which was five degrees Celsius warmer than the present. There is a close correlation between variations in solar activity and temperature anomalies in Greenland, but there is no correlation between variations in carbon dioxide concentration and temperature changes in Greenland. The IPCC in 2001 said that to melt even half the Greenland ice sheet would require temperature to rise by 5.5 degrees Celsius and remain that high for several thousand years. Gore says that the ice has story to tell and it is worldwide. He shows several before and after pictures of glaciers disappearing. However, the glacial melt began in the 1820s, long before humankind could have had any effect, and has continued at a uniform rate since, showing no acceleration since mankind began increasing the quantity of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Total ice volumes in three of the last four ice ages were lower than they are today, and global warming had nothing to do with that. Gore says terrible tragedies are occurring in the southern Sahara, because of drought which he blames on global warming. There is no drought caused by global warming. In 2007 there were record rains across the whole of the southern Sahara. In the past 25 years the Sahara has shrunk by some 300,000 square kilometres because of additional rainfall. Before 1200 AD there were frequent, prolonged and severe droughts in the Great Plains. Since 1200 AD there has been more rainfall. Gore says disturbing changes have been measured under the West Antarctic ice sheet, implicitly because of global warming. Yet most of the recession in this ice sheet over the past 10,000 years has occurred in the absence of any sea level or temperature forcing. In most of Antarctica, the ice is in fact growing thicker. Mean Antarctic temperature has actually fallen throughout the past half century. Antarctic sea ice spread to a 30-year record extent in late 2007. Gore says half a dozen ice shelves each larger than Rhode Island have broken up and vanished from the Antarctic Peninsula recently, implicitly because of global warming. Gore does not explain that the ice shelves have melted before, as studies of seabed sediments have shown. The Antarctic Peninsula accounts for about 2% of the continent, in most of which the ice is growing thicker. Gore focuses on the Larsen B ice shelf, saying that it completely disappeared in 35 days. Yet there's been extensive ice shelf breakup throughout the past 10,000 years. And the maximum ice shelf extent may have been in the Little Ice Age in the late 15th century. Gore says that because of global warming, mosquitoes are climbing to higher altitudes. They are not. Most recent outbreaks have been at lower levels than those of a century and more ago. He says that Nairobi was founded a thousand metres above sea level so as to be above the mosquito line. It was not. In the period before a human caused global warming could have had any significant effect, there were ten malaria outbreaks in Nairobi, one of which reached as far up as Eldoret, almost 3,000 metres above sea level. Malaria is not a tropical disease. Mosquitoes need no more than 15 degrees Celsius to breed. The largest malaria outbreak of modern times was in Siberia in the 1920s and 1930s when 13 million were infected. 600,000 died and 30,000 died as far north as Archangelus on the Arctic Circle. There is no reason to suppose that malaria will spread even if climate continues to become warmer. Gore says that as well as malaria, global warming is spreading dengue fever, Lyme disease, West Nile virus, arena virus, avian flu, Ebola virus, E. coli 0157H7, hantavirus, Legionella, leptospirosis, 
multi-drug resistant TB, Nipah virus, SARS and Vibrio cholera 0139. It is doing no such thing. Only the first four diseases are insect-borne, but none is tropical. Of the other diseases named by Gore, not one is sensitive to increased temperature. They are spread not by warmer weather, but by rats, chickens, primates, pigs, poor hygiene or cold weather. Gore says that West Nile virus spread throughout the US in just two years, implicitly because of global warming. It did not. West Nile virus flourishes in any climate. Warming of the climate does not affect its influence or prevalence. Gore describes carbon dioxide as global warming pollution. It is not. It is food for plants and trees. Tests have shown that even at concentrations 30 times those in the present day, even the most delicate plants flourish. Gore says a couple of years ago in Europe they had that heat wave that killed 35,000. Although some scientists agree with Gore, the scientific consensus is that extreme warm anomalies more unusual than the 2003 heat wave occur regularly. In the US alone it has been estimated that 174,000 fewer people are being killed each year because there are fewer episodes of extreme cold. Gore says the peak arrival date for migratory birds 25 years ago was April the 25th. Their chicks hatched in June the 3rd, just at the time when the caterpillars were coming out. But 20 years of warming later, the caterpillars peaked two weeks earlier. The chicks tried to catch up with it, but they couldn't, so they were in trouble. Yet adaption is easier for flycatchers. They merely fly a few tens of kilometres further north than they'll find caterpillars hatching at the appropriate time. Though Gore does not say so, what is bad news for the plied flycatchers is good news for the caterpillars and for the butterflies that they will become. Gore misuses footage of a glacier apparently carving off enormous slabs of ice into the sea. The glacier is one that is known to be advancing and more rapidly than previously. It is in southern Argentina where it crosses and eventually dams Lake Argentino. All water builds up behind the ice dam and eventually bursts it. It occurs not because of global warming, but because of the regional cooling of the southern Atlantic. Gore says that rising sea levels are compelling the operators of the Thames barrier to close it more frequently than when it was first built. They are not. The barrier is indeed closed more frequently, but the reason has nothing to do with global warming or rising sea levels. The reason is a change of policy by which the barrier is closed during exceptionally low tides so as to retain water in the tidal Thames rather than keeping it out. Gore says that his prediction that the atmospheric concentration of carbon dioxide will rise to more than 600 parts per million by volume as soon as 2050, he says, is not in dispute by anybody. However, not one of the half dozen official projections made by the IPCC shows as much as 600 parts per million by 2050.